Now this next step is critical. And if you're only going to do an oil change on the shock and you're not going to replace a seal or change the valving, you really don't have to do this from this point on. Um, and in fact, it, what we're going to be doing is removing the peening that ensures that this nut does not come off. And if you're not familiar with this process, do not do this. Have somebody that's qualified do this. I cannot stress enough how important this is that this is done properly. Um, actually, you've got two types here, on the, particularly on the Japanese shocks, the Showa and the KYB. This particular unit is the Showa. And what you've got here is the peening. This, the end of this shock shaft is actually smashed over to ensure that the nut doesn't come off, but it is also smashed over on the inside to retain the rebound mechanism. This is the, the adjustment uh, is held in on the inside with the, with the peening. Now on the Kayaba here, for instance, this particular unit is just smashed over and there's a hole in the middle so you don't really have to worry about, about grinding this off and you can actually grind this off completely flat and remove the nut. On the Showa, this is very, very tricky. So what we're going to do is actually show you, get into more uh, detail about how to actually remove this nut. Now this is a picture of the cutaway. It actually comes in the gold valve, uh, in the gold valve kit. And what you notice here, if you can make this out, this right here is the peening. You see the end of the shaft, there's the threads obviously. This is the internal mechanism, the rebound mechanism. Out here is the nut. And what we want to do is leave this little lip intact, but yet remove that external lip. So what we're going to do, actually there's a couple of ways to do this. One is you can actually put it on a lathe and turn it off, in which, in, in which case all you do is just cut the end off here. What we, what we can do in a shop is just with a bench grinder, a regular, uh, regular grinder, grind the nut at this angle up here. Just grind it along there, making sure that there's enough of the hex left so you can actually put a wrench on it. What you want to do is you want to make sure that that little lip is still intact and then you take off the outside. Like I say, again, if you're not clear on this, do not do this because this is very, very important. If this is done improperly, the guts of this rebound mechanism will come out and could conceivably lock up the shock. Okay, now once you've actually removed the nut, you see how this one's ground at an angle here. Once you've actually removed the nut, you go ahead to take the, take the valving all off of the, uh, off of the shaft. Now, I like to use this little special tool, which uh, made out of a piece of welding rod. And it all, in, in fact, one of the neat things about this is that it can also double as a pointer in case you have to ever have to explain this to anybody and, and point someplace. Okay, anyway, uh, you go ahead and stick this in the end of the shaft and you can lift the whole valving stack right off. Looks like there's a little bit of a burr. What you want to do is you dress that up with a, uh, with a file and remove the burr and then all of this will slip right off. Now, uh, since you've seen me last, what I've done is I walked over to the grinder and just put a little bit of a chamfer on the edge of this and then hit it, dusted it with the, the wire wheel. And what that allows us to do is pull all the valving off. Notice also that particularly on this shock, there is, there is a washer that goes underneath the base plate. Some people lose this when they take the shock apart. But uh, you go ahead and take this off and this little tool here like this allows me to dip this into a solvent tank and, and clean this without, uh, without losing the orientation of all these parts. Okay, now go ahead and set the valving aside for right now and what we'll do is we'll actually do some maintenance to the rest of the shaft, the seal, etc. What you want to do is take the, uh, take the seal head, which this whole unit here is called the seal head, and this is the cap, take these off, take the bottom out bumper off, and you want to inspect all of these parts. Go ahead and clean everything in here, clean the shaft. Sometimes this, this cup gets filled up with mud and everything, packed with mud. One of the things that you want to do is blow out the center of the shaft. Because we've done all this grinding here, actually you can get a bunch of, uh, uh, bunch of uh, junk stuffed in the valving here. So what we'll actually do is, again with the, the rubber tipped air nozzle, plug the other side here and go ahead and blow that out. 
go ahead and, and uh, uh, clean all this with solvent. Then what you want to do is you want to inspect the shaft. Take a, look, a very, very close look at the shaft. Look for pits. Look for the chrome being worn through. Uh, look for it being bent. Anything that, that uh, looks unusual, you want to be very, very careful when you inspect the shaft. It, uh, sometimes very, very small pits you can, you can take out with like, say, 600 grit sandpaper or something like that. Uh, but if the, if the, the seal is, uh, has been leaking profusely and, and uh, this has got a lot of pits in it, you probably want to go ahead and replace the shaft. But uh, just uh, get a good eye on the shaft and, and check it out. Also, on the seal head assembly, there are three things to check on this in particular. One is the O-ring on the outside, and typically these, these do not go bad unless there was a burr or something when, when, uh, when you actually took this out of the shock body. Underneath, the, this is the, uh, actually the wiper on the outside, and underneath inside there is a, uh, a Teflon bushing. And what you want to look at, and the Teflon uh, typically is either a gray or, or even sometimes a, a, almost a bronze color. What you want to do is inspect that surface very, very carefully and see where, if and when it is, uh, it is worn through. If it's worn through, you want to go ahead and replace it or the entire seal head assembly. A lot of times it's less expensive to replace the seal head assembly than it is all the separate parts. And we have these parts available at Racetech. If you want to get into the seal itself, this top out bumper actually just pops out, pries out with a screwdriver. Now this is a typical KYB or Kayaba seal head assembly, which is a little bit trickier than the Showa. What they've actually done, it's, it also has a top out bumper, but what they've done is they've peened over the edge of, uh, of the seal head assembly to hold that in. And you cannot get this metal plate that's uh, on the other side of the uh, top out bumper you cannot get that plate out unless you take and unpeen this. And it's a little bit tricky, but uh, I actually use a big socket clamp in a vise and then tap on the side of it with a, uh, with a plastic mallet. But like I say, we have uh, either rebuilt or brand new seal head assemblies here at Racetech too. So uh, if you need to do maintenance on the seal head assembly, and you know, like I say again, check the O-ring on the outside, look for nicks, that kind of thing, cuts and nicks on the, on the O-ring. And if you have to replace it, certainly go ahead and replace it. Another area to look at is the, uh, the bottom out bumper itself. Bottom out bumpers can wear out. A lot of people don't even realize that they can wear out. This is a, a brand new bottom out bumper. And obviously, these are for different models, but uh, uh, shows you what a brand new one looks like. And what you want to do is look for tears and cuts in the bottom out bumper itself. And uh, you can see that this one's pretty much uh, dusted here. What you want to do, obviously, is replace the, these if they're bad as well.